Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Enter the Matrix, game thoughts. So, in the first movie, it was only really agents who could dodge bullets. So why is it that everyone can in this game? Basically, every time someone is being shot at, that it's some and it's someone who has to survive, they just, you know, sort of duck and that's it. You know, they, they don't have particular problems, you know, dodging bullets. I thought that was supposed to be kind of a special quality, you know, agents and the one kind of stuff. And that's it, you know. But no, here it just happens over and over. I don't even think that they needed to you know, it's like they wrote themselves into a corner and refused to admit that they had, so they said, well, okay, then they'll just dodge the bullets, and that's it. You know, it seems like, for example, in the sewers, you know, three people get shot at other than the main character you're playing as, who also dodges bullets. Why didn't the three of them just run off before being shot at, and then your character spots the agent and just runs off? Wouldn't that have solved it right there, you know, and then, I mean, one thing that does work, though, is there at the beginning, you're, you know, going for the hard line, you think it's going to be right behind this one door, but it's going to have to be behind another door after you climb another ladder, you know, the agent knocks you back, and he's about to shoot, but then your other character shoots, the other character, the one you're not playing as, shoots at the agent who dodges all the bullets, and in the meantime, your character runs away. That worked. That made good sense. One thing, though, I mean, I already stated in the review that the best parts are when they have separate levels, you know, where you don't just recognize the exact area as, you know, when you played as the other character. I get it, they didn't have time to do that with all of them. Wouldn't it make a lot of sense if only one of the two was, you know, going over the roofs, chasing the hard line there at the beginning? You know, I'm pretty sure, no matter who you play as, you see Ghost being somewhat hurt. He's like, thrown out of the car, or maybe they both are. Anyway, he seems to be hurt. Wouldn't it make a lot of sense if he just stayed behind and, you know, you know, held the path clear so that you know, she wouldn't get shot in the back or something? It also seems like you know, would could have been a cool level if you had to stay in one spot and just shoot at people. Rail shooter kind of thing. Maybe you could take cover, reload, then get back out, you know, just classic rail shooter is what I'm talking. Or maybe a sniper segment. Anyway, if they had time, maybe that, you know, could have been kind of cool. Because it is strange to see Ghost be, like, hurt in the legs, and then he gets up and he's running. Yeah. Anyway, also, you know, the agent... The agents sometimes take forever to shoot at you in the cutscenes. That's just, yeah, kind of, it just takes away the threat of them. And that's really too bad because there are a lot of, you know, sightings of agents. And they're supposed to still be scary. And I would say, on the whole, they are. And you do tend to just, you know, take Cypher's advice. Run, you know, in the other direction as fast as you can. There are a couple of times where you do fight them, and that's plenty fun. I think the most boring would have to be when you just knock him back into the electricity, you know. Where's the fun in that? Give me the, you know, at the beginning you're chasing the hard line. You run across roofs and f you can see on the other roof there's someone who's, I think, just turning into an agent. Or he lands, that's what it is. He jumps down from above and lands. That cool landing that agents have, just like in the first movie with Trinity also, if you jump over to him and you do it exactly right and you're lucky, you can actually knock him down between the two roofs. That's kind of cool. And you can also take out some of the smiths there at the end, especially if you use that oddly convenient grenade launcher that's just on top of a roof there. I don't know, did Sparks place it? Is that what it is? 
so Cain and Abel, for those who don't know, the two brothers, you know, the, the, the ones that you have to knock back into the arms of the prisoners to make your escape with whoever you're not playing as, you know, when you escape from the chateau. Apparently, you know, one of them told the, the Merovingian about the keymaker's key. And does he, like, crush it in his hand over the mouth of the character that you're then going to save? Never mind how exactly. I guess then all three of them just leave through the other door. Very fortunate for your character, I guess. Anyway. Then the keymaker starts making a new key, and that was fine, or... I mean, he, he's all you know, up in arms about, oh, the key, once it's been used, it can never be used again. But then he goes on and makes another one, or does he get it back? Does the Merovingian just give him the key back and not figure into... I don't know, it just seems like they maybe didn't think that plot thread all the way through. Speaking of plot threads not necessarily thought all the way through, after you try to leave the chateau, you run across the twins, and then they chase you, you know, in the, the tunnel, and that's kind of it. So I guess they're just standing there waiting in case someone, you know, tries to escape through the garage, and they just chase them if they haven't heard that the Merovingian, you know, has allowed them to leave or something, and... I don't know, and then I guess they get back in time for them to be there when, you know, Neo and company make their way to the chateau. Yeah. I do like the run-ins with the Oracle and Persephone. You know, very clever stuff, and I do think that the whole ghost is in love with Trinity, but he knows he can't have her kind of thing is somewhat interesting. And I do like that they actually do give you something other than just different levels sometimes to, you know, motivate you to play as both characters. Because no matter which character you play as, you're going to get a message from, well, if you defeat Seraph, you, you can, you know, you can fail in your fight against Seraph. So, Seraph. Anyway. But if you do defeat him, you'll get, you know, a unique message from the Oracle only meant for this one person, and although I'm not sure Ghosts is all that interesting now that I think about it, but anyway, and you will get, you know, some point about, you know, love from Persephone. Well, I guess that, yeah, anyway, sorry, that Persephone goes run in with Persephone and goes run in with the Oracle kind of tie together. You know, they're about how he's in love with Trinity and he can't have her. The final levels are really, really easy, especially as Niobe, you know, just controlling the the hovercraft and that's it, you know, that you even get to shoot and you know there's this awkward thing of the Sentinels just outside of, you know, like they're not always right in front of you, so, but clearly when you, when the hovercraft turns, regardless of which of them you're playing as, they'll be equally, you know, they'll still be right in front, they might be, you know, further away, but, you know, it's not like you can shake them, you know, you can't move so far that they are, you know, away. And and as Niobe, you're actually flying towards them, and yet they never get any closer. You know, again, rushed. As I say in the review. I suppose that's about what I have to say about it. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.